Hi everybody, it's Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this pullover uh, granny square sweater. It can be made for a man or a woman. Um, and you can use any colors of yarn that you would like. Now you will, this is more of an uh, advanced uh, intermediate pattern because I don't go over specifically. You, you ha you're going to need to know how to size um, up clothing for yourself. Um, and how to sew granny squares together. There are many ways to sew. Actually, I'll drop a link in the description box. Uh, Donna Wolf from Nostalgia has a great video on how to sew up grannies. I do show you a little bit, but my yarn is black, so it's probably not completely invisible. Now, I made this uh, my size, and I will tell you um, that you can make your squares bigger to fit fit you but you really are going to need to try it on yourself if i had to guess this would be a size medium that i have am making in the video and um i'm five foot three as you can see so it is about 19 inches across and it does have this little flip over collar now if you don't want that you can add a hood i do explain um that in the beginning or um when we get to this i explain how you can add a hood also if you don't if you think it's too far off the shoulders and you want it to come in more feel free to sew it up a little bit more like that that's completely up to you feel free to make half uh granny um half granny squares just i thought about doing that but i kind of like the flip over color look better um feel free to make it a cardigan just by Leave, don't sew this part up right here and um, just add an edge on it yeah sleeves um, these are my size I'll give you a link those are also gonna have to be adjusted to your size but from the time I start the sleeves the double crochet all the way down is about 18 inches but adjustable like I said I tell you how to decrease and everything so but re remember you will need to know how to You'll, you'll need to be familiar with how to size up clothing for yourself, how to measure yourself. I go, um, for this I went for, I went um, by my chest measurement. So um, that's what I would suggest you go by also, unless you do it a different way, that's fine. But let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project I use um, Lion Brand Mandela Roving yarn. It is classified as a three weight yarn, although I said, I think it's kind of like more towards a four but you know as long as you measure your body is what you're gonna have to do for this project you could use the three weight or four weight there are 415 yards uh, in this cake and it is 100% acrylic this is not the color I used I used this blue one and I went through about I actually color controlled mine so I pulled my cakes apart um, you can tell that from the look of it that it did not come out striped but I used uh, and I would say I used probably a total of four all together um, if I was to compile them together I probably used about four of them of that lightweight three so um, a little over 1600 yards for the size that I made and then I'm going to be using a size J which is a six millimeter crochet hook Okay, for the square, we're going to start off with the slip knot on our hook. It's a very easy square. And we're going to work a chain of three. One, two, three. Then we're going to slip stitch back to the first stitch to form a ring. And then we're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Now we're going to work back into the ring and work two more double crochets. And then we're going to chain two. And then we're going to go back through the center of the ring and work three more double crochets. So that chain two was our first corner of our square. And then we're going to chain two again and we're going to work three more double crochets through the center of the ring okay, 
So now you can see we have th three sets of three double crochet. We need four sets, so we're going to go ahead and chain two again. Go through and work three more double crochets through the center of the ring. And we will have our four sets of three doubles. And what we're going to do now to end the round and how we end every round is the same. We're not going to chain two here. We're just going to put a half double crochet into the top of our beginning chain three. So yarn over, go right into the top of it, and half double. And that's going to count as a chain two space. It actually puts us right in the middle so we don't have to do any slip stitching or anything. So that's round one of the square. So we're going to start off, we're in the corner now. So we're going to start off by chaining three, which counts as a double crochet. And we're going to work one more double into the same space here. Now our next stitch, we are going to do a front post double crochet. So it's actually around that chain three right there. And then we are going to do a regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then a front post double crochet around the next. And now you'll see that we're at our corner, our chain two space. So in the chain two space, we work two double crochets, a chain of two, and two more double crochets. So that's what goes into every chain two space. So we're going to start again by doing a front post double crochet around the first, around the next stitch here. A regular double crochet into the next. Front post double crochet around the next. Now we're at our corner, so we're going to work two double crochets, chain two and two more doubles all into that same chain space okay again front post double around the next stitch regular double into the next front post double around the next and now we are at our chain two space so we work our two doubles chain two and two doubles front post double around the next double into the next front post double around the next which is actually the last stitch and now we're at that space where we started we had we and this is where we're going to end. So we have a two double crochets here, that chain three, and then that double crochet. There, so there's two doubles. So we need to add two more doubles to that same space to make it look like the other ones. And now we're going to end by putting a half double crochet into the top of that beginning chain three, and that will act as our chain two space of the round. Now what we're going to do is just repeat what we just did. That was round two. So it's just the same thing that we just did. We're just going to keep repeating that until we get our square as big as we want it to be. So again, we'll start off with the chain three. Go back into the same space here and double crochet one time. And then we start off with a front post double crochet into the first stitch regular double into the top of the next stitch front post double around the next stitch and you can see that it's a post stitch from the previous round our posts will always line up and a regular double into the next front post double around the next 
regular double into the next front post double around the next and now we're at our chain two space so into the chain two space we work two doubles chain two and two doubles and then we start again front post double around the next stitch and a regular double into the top of the next and we're going to keep repeating this until we get our square as big as we want it to be okay so I went ahead and did a total of four rounds so I'm gonna measure my square right now I am gonna put go around it one more time with single crochet but right now it measures five inches and by the time I get done putting my single crochet around it's going to measure about five and a half inches now um, you, you look at we'll go ahead and put the single crochet you need to make your square big enough that it's gonna fit you how you want it whether it be loose or tight um, so if my squares and, and you have four across the front so if my squares are five and a half inches that's going to equal 22 inches across and then it'd be 22 inches in the back so that'll be a total of 44 um, around the chest area but you have to take it into account that it's going to take off several inches when you sew it together so um so when you sew it together it's probably going to take off at least three inches from the top back or front panel and probably about three inches from the back panel so you need to take that in account when you're measuring um your how big you want it like right now mine stands um like i said they're about five five and a half inches a piece i'm doing four so that would be 22 inches across the front and 22 across the back for a total of 44 inches that's too big for me but it will i've already sewn part of mine together and i know that um it's going to take off about three inches off the front panel which made it around 19 inches and the back panel around 19 inches once it's all sewn together and done with so um and that would be a little bit more my size so if you are a large larger you might want to go around a, and you want or you want a more loose fitting um, jacket than I have you might want to go around again um, and it will make it um, every time you go around it's going to add in inches to your project but to keep in mind that it will take off uh, a few inches on each panel by the time you get done sewing it up so it's just when I measure myself it's just kind of trial and error I figured out that it was going to take that many inches off my front panel so that's how I adjusted to make my back panel so it fit so mine fits me right but remember you're bigger you're going to go around and make your square bigger and um but now once you get your square as big as you want it to be we're going to go outline it with a row of single crochet so you can start in any corner that you want chain one now we're going to go back into that same chain space and we're going to work two single crochets and now i'm going to work around and i'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch until i get to my next chain two space Okay, now when you get to your chain two space, every chain two space gets the same amount. So I, we just started differently in the first one. But from now on, we're going to put four single crochets in each of the chain two spaces. So I'm going to go right in the space and work four singles. And then I'm going to start again putting a one single crochet in every stitch right here. You have to be very careful. There's a chain three there. So you need to go in top of that and single crochet. And sometimes the next stitch gets a little hidden. And, but it's right here. You got to make sure you get it. 
otherwise your square is going to look wonky and it won't be straight. And I'm going to go ahead and work one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my next chain 2 space. When I get to my next chain 2 space, I'll work four single crochets into that. And I'm going to continue that pattern until I get around back around to where I started. Okay, I've made it back to my starting point. And remember, I started with two single crochets there in that first chain two space. So I'm going to go ahead and end by putting two single crochets there. So that will be a total of four there. Since we started with two, we ended with two. Now we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet and tie that off. Now I made a total of 40 squares for mine. You've seen um, the measurements how it looks on me if you want to make yours longer by all means uh, you can make it as long as you want shorter by all means as short as you want um, but I did 20 on the back and 20 on the front so I will show you how we sew uh, how I sew them together you could sew them together multiple ways you can use a yarn needle you can slip or you can slip stitch you can uh, single crochet many many ways to sew a granny together the way I sew it together for this particular project is the reason why it takes off so many inches. Um, different w different methods of sewing can actually add inches um, to your project. So it really depends on what you want. But I sew mine, so I lay mine out how I want it. This in whatever color order you prefer or whatever, you know. And I kind of just sew them backwards. So, uh, front side up on that one, back side up, so it's back sides on both. And then I will take my, I'm going to use black to sew mine together. I'm going to be slip stitching mine together, but like I said, any method would work. Just take into account what method you choose and if it's going to add or take away inches from your project. So you want to start, there's two. Okay, so there's two loops there. You can see the front loop and the back loop. So we're in the corner here, and there's four single crochets in the corner. You want to start in the third one from he over here. So here's one, two. You want to go through the front loop only. This is how I sew mine together of this of this one. And on your next one, you want to go into the same stitch, but you're going to go in the back loop only. So one, two, three, back loop only. And then you take your yarn that you're using to sew it together, go through those loops, and then we work across, go ahead and chain one, working through the front loop of the first square and the back loop of the next square and slip stitch. The front loop of the first square, the back loop of the next square and slip stitch. And we do this all the way across, front loop of the first square, back loop of the next square, and slip stitch. And you do this until you get to the corner. And this is what's creating the ridges on the front of the jacket when you or the top when you flip it over it uh, creates those black ridges there so I'm going to continue across until I get over here to the corner and when you get to the corner here you know that there's four stitches in the corner go through the first two single crochets and slip stitch them together And then we will tie it off. Like, or we continue. We can go ahead and add. If you want to continue like this, you can tie off and then uh, start another one. Or you can continue by following the same order here. Like this. So again, 
I'll go across and when I flip it open they'll be attached like that and then I would do it again and then they will be attached and then you can start your next row Across, all the way across uh, four rows they'll be attached and you can do that all the way down and then once you're done sewing that up and then we will sew all the way down this side the same way from front you'll flip it over like this and slip stitch it all the way down the exact same way whatever manner you chose to slip stitch yours together that's how we'll continue to do it so once you get your two panels made you can see that I have my two panels made I have um, four rows of five granny squares and I made two panels the exact same with the exception of the front panel I left the top two grannies unsewn so they could flip over like that in the front kind of act kind of a little bit like a collar but you know but we will go around and clean clean this up a bit um, later now you want but the back panel is sewn up at that spot so we want to go ahead and sew the whole thing together now but we need to leave an armhole um, which I've already done on this side I've sewed this side together I left my armhole and I made my sleeve that way I could tell you how big uh, I did mine but anyways to sew it together we want to take both of our panels and flip them wrong side out <clears throat> So just, we're going to sew them together the same way that we sewed everything else together. But you have to remember that, sorry for all my tails, we have to leave a spot for our armhole and our neck opening. So I left my neck opening um, two granny squares. And I sewed this top granny square the same way to this top granny square. And that kind of sits on my shoulder. And then I left... Uh, this these open right here for the neck hole and then for the armhole you want to measure yours um, and see how big you want to leave yours open but I actually left the one square open for mine I um, I did a total of 44 stitches for my sleeve and that's the top part so all the way around I did 22 on this side and 22 on this side 44 is that what I said yeah 22 on this side and 22 on this side around and um, that was what I left for my armhole you might need yours to be bigger so you might need to come down into this granny square which is fine however you know you just start sewing up to however big you want to leave your armhole um, I do you do decrease the sleeve um, it starts out big and then I kind of just decrease it a, a couple times down the row um, to make it a little bit uh, tighter on the arm but anyways you want to sew up both sides the same remember to leave your um, armhole however big you decide to make it the exact same amount of stitches on both sides and then up here you want to sew you now we're sewing the wrong sides facing each other and then we'll flip it right side out this this uh, first granny here these first two grannies sew them at the top and that'll be our shoulder and then leave your armhole open however big you want it and then we sew down the rest of the way in the same manner that we've been sewing the whole time just slip stitching so I'm gonna go ahead and start and let's see where I started over here okay I actually started in a corner of the second granny so the very first stitch kind of tight and then the first last or back stitch of that granny pull through lots of tails I have chain one and now we'll start sewing up this granny square here at the top across the top the same way remember that we sewed it to the others you go through the front loop on the one clo the square closest to you. I know it's hard to see because it's black, but and then the back loop on the one furthest from you. And so 
and we do this all the way across just the top of this granny here like this and once you make it the top of this granny we tie off and mark our we do both sides the same leave your two squares open for your neck gotta have a neck hole So I'm going to continue across the top here. Going through the front loop on this one and the back loop on the opposite one. Remember, I'm at the top of my work where this is where my shoulders are going to go across this granny here. And then you leave these open. These two grannies here are on the bed are open. And these two grannies are open also and we left that split and this right here is my armhole you want to help go ahead and remember or my uh, top of my other shoulder sew it up i already sewed mine up just the same as you're sewing up this one i got that top sewn up there and i just tied off right at the top and now remember you want to mark your spot for your armholes you could try it on and pinch together to see how big you need your armholes to be to fit your arm I did mine. I just left one square open and that uh, I was able to get 44, like I said, 22 stitches on this side and 22 on this side. So we're going to go ahead and start wherever you decide to leave your armhole, whether it's down here or here, and you slip stitch it together the same way that we just been slip stitching it all together and then we'll flip it right side out and we'll have to clean up some edges and make the sleeves still. So I have mine sewn together and I have it flipped the right side out and I took a measurement and remember my squares were five and a half inches a piece which would equal four of them would equal 20 uh, 22 inches and now that it's sewn together it measures about 19 across um, so that would be about the measurement for this sweater so now what we'll do is uh what you want to do um i'll just tell you um you'll want to clean up the bottom edges just by using whatever color you want um doing a couple rows of single crochet around the bottom two three however many you want um just to get the edges cleaned up or you could do a ribbing around the bottom just anything to clean up the square to how the squares are kind of lopsided um, I'll probably be do I'll probably do a row of single crochet or two around the bottom all the way around just to make you know make that look clean and neat and then we will need to clean this up up here um, so we have I don't have a lot of room here we have our spot there that is split for like kind of just you can kind of hang it over like that so I'm going to go around the top and then around this part and then around here and kind of close this up a little bit with single crochet around this one and back around the top to where I started. Um, maybe I'll go ahead, there's a lot of tails, but yeah i think i'll just go ahead and start right up here um anywhere kind of just um no i just want to go i want to start on this side because i want my single crochets to be facing the right side so i need to start over here um i'm not going to be going through one loop i'm going to be going through both loops this time so just grab any stitch and pull through I know this is the opposite side of the granny square and that's fine that's what we want but I'm gonna put my go uh, chain one go through that same stitch and single crochet I'm gonna go down it and making my granny or making the single crochet uh, face upright this I guess this, this is kind of acting as like a little bit of a collar you could put a hood on it if you wanted to 
you would just, uh, if you wanted to attach a hood, you would just start from this corner all the way around the neck to this corner and go back and forth with rows of double crochet until you got about um, 12 inches tall and then you would uh, sew the top of the hood together. So that's an easy way you can put a hood on it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave this little flap over here as a decoration I guess. So I'm just single crocheting and cleaning up this uh, collar edge. I just want to show you what I'm going to do to close up that area at the bottom. Okay, I've come to the corner of the granny square. I'm going to go ahead, let's see, we put, remember we put four single crochets in this granny square. In the middle two, I'm going to put two single crochets in each of those. That way it lays a little bit flatter. And then the other two, I'll just put one in. There we go. That way it just kind of lays down flat and it's not going to be, it won't flip up on you. I'm going to continue down my collar area. I need to have a, someone pay one of my kids to sew tails. A dollar a tail. <laughs> They'd make a lot of money. I'm just kidding. All right, so continue down until you get to where these two squares meet. It's kind of a mess. Well, mine is anyways. And I'll show you how we're going to close that up and make it look a little bit neater. I think it already looks neater now with this uh, single crochet edge on it. It looks a lot cleaner, doesn't it? I like that. I like that a lot. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this, but as far as the collar-wise being flipped over, I thought about just doing half granny squares but I thought I just wanted to do a collar. Okay so I come to this messy area here. What I basically want to do is just kind of close the gap up here. So just do your best to kind of do kind of single crochet it all together <laughs> the best that you can. So let's see here. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just jump across to my blue one here and single start, continue my single crochet like that and then I think I'll just take my yarn needle when I'm finished and sew up this little gap here that's left that didn't get sewed when I was sewing it earlier or use this tail and just kind of sew it up a little bit so if you may not even have that gap you might have sewed yours up correctly I just I guess I didn't sew it as far up as I should have. So I'm going to continue this. And when I get up to my next corner here of my <sighs> granny square, I'm going to call it my granny square collar. <laughs> um, I want to do the same thing in this corner as we did the other one. It just helps it lay flat. So remember how we put four single crochets in the corner of, of our granny squares? So we are going to the middle two. We'll put two single crochets in each of those. That's what we did on the other side. So two in that one. And then remember we're going through both loops. We're not doing one loop anymore. Two in that one. And then just continue working one single crochet. If, we, if my project wasn't so big, all the way across. Until we get back to where we started. So we'll go across the back also of our work. Okay, now for the sleeves, like I said, you are uh, you determine how many how big you left your opening to fit your sleeve. I left the mine where there were 44 stitches. So I've already want you want to make sure you do both sleeves the exact same size. You can do them any color you want all the same color it doesn't really matter but I've done 44 double crochets all the way around 
and then I went ahead and ended with a slip stitch into my first double crochet. I'm going to do a total of six rounds of double crochet, counting this one. This would be number one, and I'll have 44 stitches at the end of every round following me. Now, if you made yours bigger, however many you have, you need to do six rounds of that size. So I'm working on round two and I'm of uh, my sleeve and I'll meet back up with you when I finish out round six. Okay, so I've got my six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six. I would suggest you try it on and if it feels tight for you still, you can still do a couple more rows before you do any decreases. But mine's fine at six. I'm going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first double crochet. I'm going to change colors of yarn now. And I'm going to do a row of single crochet decrease. So I still have a 40, um, four stitches. I am going to, like I said, use any color you want. Make them all the same color. Whatever you want. Your sweater. Now what we need to do is evenly as possible um, put five decreases in, in this next row, which will be row uh, seven, I guess. Um, so go ahead and start. Just uh, equally, no matter how many stitches you have, just kind of uh, place five single crochet decreases to where they're semi have the same amount of stitches. It doesn't have to be exact. It's not going to be exact because my number isn't even an exact number. So what I'm going to do for mine, since I have 44 stitches, I'm going to start there in that first stitch and I'm going to chain one. I'm going to go back in it and single crochet. I'm going to do six single crochets in a row. That would be number one. And then I'm going to do a single crochet decrease. And that's what I'm going to do all the way around for mine. Depending on the sleeve size that you chose, you will might have more um, single crochets before you do the decrease. But you just want to kind of evenly space out your five single crochet decreases um, all the way around. And what it's going to do is take away five stitches. So that's what we want to happen. <clears throat> like I said, it's not it's not going to be even. <clears throat> so don't worry about that. Just do your best to get it uh, as even as possible. But. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this, spacing out five single crochet decreases until I get back to my starting point. Okay, I've made it back to the beginning and of round seven. Now, following along with me, I will have a total of 39 stitches because I had 44 and I took five away. Now what I'm going to do is change colors again. I'm going to go to my light blue. And I am going to do six rows of the light blue of one double crochet in each row. So, just like we did up here, except for now I will have 39 stitches at the end of every round as opposed to the 44 that we had before. So this is what I'm going to do the whole way down. So I'll go ahead and I chained one. I'm going to go ahead and double crochet back in that same stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what you'll need to do the whole way down um, on my other sleeve. So what I did, I told you, is I did six rows here of one color. And then I did I decreased with my single crochet, I decreased five away, which left me 39 stitches. And I did six rows of this color. And then again, I used my black and I decreased again five. I took five away, which left me 34 stitches. So I did six rows in this color, all double crochet. And then I decreased again, taking away another five stitches, with which uh, left me 29 stitches. And then I did four or six rows of this color 
and then I decreased one more time. I took five stitches away at the bottom of single crochet, which left me um, 24 stitches, I believe. I think that was correct. And um, I did one more row of just regular single crochet after that. So again, one more time, if you're following along with me. Now you might need to add, a, you might need to make yours longer than mine. You might need to make it shorter. You can adjust it as you go. But remember, I, for, for my size, I started out with 40 row, 44 stitches. I did six rows of double crochet. And then I did a row of single crochet and removed evenly spaced out five single crochet decreases, which left me with 39 stitches. Now I did six rows of the next color, all double crochet. And then I did a decrease row, evenly spacing out five single crochet decreases, which left me 34 stitches. I did six rows of double crochet on my next collar, and then I did another row of single crochet decreasing, uh, evenly spacing out five decreases. And then that left me 29 stitches, which I did six rows of my last collar of double crochet. And then at the end, I did one more row of five, um, decreased five single crochets there and it left me 24 stitches and then I did one more row of single crochet at the end remember you adjust yours as you go um, if you want it longer make it longer um, but that's how I did mine and that's how I'm going to do my other sleeve also okay it is finished let's check it out I went ahead and hit all my tails I went down the bottom with two rows of single crochet to clean up the bottom edge. Um, I think I, here um, I told you that you could put a hood on it. If you try it on and you feel like it's too, um, the opening is too wide, feel free to sew it up a little bit more. That's fine too, but I, it turned out all right. You know, this wasn't my intentions for it at all, um, but some things don't always work out as planned. And some things you like better than others. I'm not, I'm not a granny square person. But I hope some people like it and some people want to make it. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Uh, I know it was, it was quick. And uh, like I said, you had to be informed on how to size up your own clothing. And um, stuff like that. But uh, thanks everybody for watching. And I will see you on my next video. Stay safe.